speaker is Antonella from the Tor Project, and she's going to tell us how the Tor Project was concept design and their open approach. So, please, Antonella. Uh, my name is Antonella. Um, I'm a product designer. I have been trying and working around the world the last seven years. Um, I'm quite tired now, so I want to stay at home. Um, and I'm currently leading the AX team at the Tor Project. The Tor Project at the AX um, team at the Tor Project works across all the teams. Um, we work with the applications team building Tor Browser for Android and Tor Browser for desktop. We work with the community team traveling around the world in something that we call the Global South Initiative. I will talk a little bit about that later. Um, meeting human rights organizations and internet freedom people uh, around the world. We work with the communications team on things like end of the year campaign and raising money. We work with the metrics team, uh, finding a way to show our open data easily for users. Um, we work with the network team also to improve the access to any services. Hmm. The foundation of the Tor projects um, are based on creating technology that respects users. I really like this pyramid from the India Education Fox. Um, it's very easy because Tor technology is like covering the base part. Um, Tor technology is decentralized, it's private, it's open, it's an interoperable, it's tactical, it's secure, and we try to make it simpler. Both of the talk is something that we are trying to focus on. We respect users in all the stages of our development. We run usability research without tracking users. Um, our approach to usability is built on respected uh, user data. We travel to places where we use apps. We run usability tests in person. We don't collect data like the industry does. Uh, it's very hard, but it's very rewarding too. All our work is open. Uh, we have meetings on ERC. Um, Overall, you see, you can read everything what we do. Um, if you type Antonella in our track bag, you can see what I have been doing the last month. Um, everything, people who came to our meetings, is people like sometimes it's anonymous. So uh, we work with people who sometimes we know who they are, sometimes we don't. Uh, and it is pretty nice. The way we work defines the product we build. Um, I found this very nice graphic from OpenDesignKit.org which explains basically our process. This is very nice, but the process often is something like this. Um, the EFC works more like a bridge. We try to tell user stories that make sense for the user. <coughs> And we try to improve our products and our technology to make user, to make them usable for our end users. Um, based on the work, I mean, we have people collecting feedback from a lot of channels: uh, Reddit, Stack Overflow, our bug tracker, um, Google Play, everywhere. We work together on prioritize this task, and we try to support <coughs> this task based on sponsors. Validate. How we validate our assumptions? Um, this year, we have been focusing on connecting com with communities um, located in the global south. If you make a line in a map of you will find countries like Colombia, Uganda, um, Uganda Kenya, uh, and India. We travel there, we meet people, we talk with them, we see how poor the infrastructure is, we see how expensive it's accessing to the internet there, we see how oppressive governments um, are ruling these countries. And this allows us to understand our user in context. 
Um, as I said before, we don't track users like the industry does. Um, so the only way we have to understand our user needs is talking with them. Tor is an academic organization. We have a lot of working groups researching over Tor everywhere. I'm happy that we have more and more people interested in usability because academic research quite of validate our assumptions. How we calculate that in real life? Last year we launched Tor Browser 8. Tor Browser 8, we will say that this is the year to try Tor. Um, so it's nice. <laughs> Um, for full and now, the browser limits fingerprinting by normalizing different features uh, that can track you, um, like everything in your browser, like your window size, the font you use, the localization you have, canvas. Um, the more people who is using Tor uh, that look the same, stronger Tor, uh, Tor is, and um, this is by design. User experience for that needs to be a priority by Tor. If you have more people using Tor, it's better for everybody. Um, this Tor Browser Edge release uh, was launched last year. Um, it was a massive release focusing on UX. I think, how many Tor users do we have here? Whoa, nice. Um, I think you remember the green about page, um, we changed that. So, <laughs> um, there are a lot of things to do. I mean, there are a lot of work to do, but I'm really happy um, where we are right here. Um, as I said, this, this was a macro release focusing on end user experience, and I think it's very good. Um, I will tell you the story about some features we have been working with. Uh, one of them is security expectation for onion services. Um, when you visit onion services before, you don't have any clue about your security. You know, when I talk about security indicators, I'm talking about this tiny little icon that you have in the URL bar. We have been working on that, and seven point four doesn't have anything. On the best cases, you have nothing, but on the worst cases, you have like a red log which is something like it's not real because onion services are often more secure than HTTP sites. Um, there are some iterations that we made. We have onion padlocks um, for different kinds of onion configuration. This is super technical. If you want to know more about that, we can talk later. Uh, but I don't want to annoy you with this thing. Another thing we improved was the secret display. Um, the secret display is a new element that for sure uh, makes part of the Tor user experience. It tells users how the Tor connections have been made. Um, we had several problems before. The secret display, um, this is important. Tor browser has first party isolation by default. That means that each time you open into Tor browser, renders a new secret for you. Um, so basically, this circuit works per tab and per site you are visiting. So this is why we moved this circuit display from the Tor button, which was like in every page, to the control center log hanger, uh, which is pretty much sense because it works per site. Um, okay. Another thing we have been working with uh, was the about Tor onboarding. Um, people who arrive to Tor browser for the first time have several ideas about what the browser is doing, but then during our usability research, we found that people open the browser and say, whoa, this is a normal browser. Yeah, for sure. So what we try to do is to explain um, how Tor works, how Tor browser can protect them, on network level, on client level. And um, let's see. I this okay. <coughs> I can't. But I can show them later. Um, all these improvements we made on desktop have been made uh, on our Tor browser for Android. Um, mobile devices are tracking devices, 
So we try to match futures with desktop and with uh, mobile phone. It's very hard, but we are trying to do that. Um, this is how it looks on the browser calendar. Um, make sure that we need it. And Localization, the rosar have been launched in 24 languages. I think it's nice because Erin is doing it. <laughs> and we know that localization is critical to reach end users. End users that not have technical background to many data, even speak English. Uh, so we really want to reach more broad users. And uh, localization is critical. How to contribute to the project? Um, as I said, all our work is open, so you can come to our meetings. There are a lot of things to do you can't imagine. So if you are a designer and you have some hours and you are interested to do that, please ping me. Um, I, I will be happy to explain how to join us. And what I will do now is to show here. Mm. This is a new version. Um, let me see if I can show you some things I have here. Okay. Here we are. You can download the Rosal Alpha, which is new. Um, if you want to try, if you find bugs, please record them. Um, Uh, there are no recycling constructors. 
<laughs> I mean, there are a lot of issues, but infrastructure and access to web, to the internet, is like critical. Our idea is that if we can make work, uh, Tor works on places over where internet is like super expensive, where data is like expensive, where infrastructure is poor, where hardware is old, then making that work in the north is very easy. Um, so localization help us to find metaphors to explain difficult concepts because sorry, the difficult technology is playing for people who doesn't have technical background. Um, so the localization help us a lot to find the words to explain non-tech people who are also end users um, to understand what is happening. There is a wiki page uh, on our on our track, it's wiki.approach.org, UXC, you have more information about our user research program. Um, as I said, Tor Project is an NGO, we are founded by organizations, um, we have this program where we travel <coughs> to global south countries, uh, we meet people in person, and this is critical for our work. Basically because even if I want to track users in the roster, I can't. <laughs> I, I don't know who is on the other side. We can't do that. Um, it's challenging because it's like I'm coming from the commercial world and now I'm here and it's like one step more of difficult thing. Um, but I have it. This kind of relates to the point uh, you just made there. So you're doing field research or in context studies like this. Um, how do you balance like wanting to share kind of what you've learned in an open way, both with the team and also with I guess other contributors who might be distributed versus like the privacy of the individuals that you're interviewing? Yeah, um it's difficult. <laughs> we have super technical users who have been using Tor so far. And when I say Tor, I'm, talk I'm talking about products, I mean I'm talking about Tor process specifically. Um we have we want to make this technology available for people who doesn't have technical understanding because very often people who most need this technology is people who live in oppressive regimes and it's people who doesn't have the technical background to understand that. So we should balance what we are explaining and what we are not. Often we want to explain any, everything. We really believe that we can empower users through education and if we can explain complex co uh, concepts in easy way people can understand. We really believe that users should opt in and opt out of things. Uh, so it's a balance between technical users and non-technical users. I'm focused on end users that are not technical and this is what we are trying to do. That. After, I mean, all this year, this technology has been made for super tech people. Um, it's fine, it's necessary, it's a process, but I think it's important to, to reach more of them. Running or tour from a lot of kids. 
So this is not ending. I mean, this is not the first step to making this new product. I'm already looking forward for the next version. We will be 2009 and maybe even better. Um, and I hope we have academic research uh, running questions about, about what we are doing. About what we are creating, I'd say the wiki has quite information. If you want to read more, you can find it there. Uh, this place is a good place to share experiences and how we are working. And if we are at the other project, I mean, we work with the same people also. Um, with this idea about to research on end users without tracking them. Um, so yeah, I hope this place is very, like, the place to share how we work. Okay, uh, if we can, we're going to close the